the passage that we looked at, Romans chapter 12, uh, 5, deal with quite a few things that we will discuss this morning. But one of the things that I want to point out as I worked on the message, the Spirit of God was leading me back to why the cross. This is a case for the cross. It is interesting that you will not be surprised if I say to you that people are emotionally drained, tired, frustrated, and will often display great anxiety when it comes to the direction of their lives. For those who have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior are becoming increasingly afraid and scared to submit their lives to Him. They don't know what to believe. They don't know who to trust. They're confused about who is the right God to worship. And they are looking at every and anything to solve the problems that they face on a daily basis. So, the question before us this morning, why the cross? Is the cross really worth it? You know, in today's society, there's so much distraction. People are running away from God. They're impatient. God is too slow. He's not delivering on time. And they feel like they're better off without him than with him. So, they're asking themselves, how can I live a successful life that is pleasing to God when the world seems to be in a state of chaos and confusion. You get the feeling that you're alone with no one to rely on. Too ashamed to seek help. Too deep in your sin to cry out to God because you're not confident any longer that God can deliver you and restore you from this stage that you're in. Too ashamed. You feel like you're in too deep. And where is God when everyone else is having a grand old good time? You're struggling. So here's what we do. Or here's what we try to do. We try to solve everything with our own strength. Based on our understanding. And far too often, we still come up short because the problems we face are usually bigger than the solution that we can provide. And we are in desperate need for help. The situation has now moved to critical. I know this morning, with an audience of this size, that I'm speaking to someone. And someone can testify to the fact. But I want us to turn our Bibles. Let's take a, chance, a moment and turn our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 3. A very well-known well passage. Proverbs chapter 3. When you get there, say amen. Let's start looking at verse 5. To verse 6, they don't know who to trust. They don't know what to believe. So here's God's response. You may be confused, but he's very clear. And he begins, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on 
your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Some translation after that says, and he will direct your part. In my Bible says, he will make your path straight. So what is the scripture saying here? God said, you have to trust me. You cannot circumvent me if you're looking for the answers that you seek. Trust is everything. Halfway trust is no trust at all. Everything or nothing. Our God does not play second fiddle to anyone. He said, lean not on your own understanding. In other words, get yourself out of my way so I can do my job. It's very difficult for us to do that when we're faced with challenges. We rely upon our experiences to, to solve these issues. And God said, get out of my way. In all your ways, in everything that you do and say, acknowledge me. Put me first. And watch me take you to the place that you want to go. You've got to get out of God's way. The case for the cross is still strong. Jesus, when he was tried and faced this, this accusation that he was supposed to be crucified because he was stirring up trouble and, 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 and these people back then, they didn't want him. They said, away with this man. And we can still hear these words, I, I find no fault in him. A case for the cross. And so we move forward thousands of years later. And here's what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that the cross is the place where salvation can be found. Jesus said, there's no other name given among men whereby you must be saved. You don't know what to believe or who to trust. No other name given among men whereby you must be saved. It is him and him alone. The cross is still the place where answers can be found to real problems. It is a place where everlasting peace can be found. The cross is still the place where full access to God is granted as we seek his mercy and his grace because of the finished work on the cross. We serve a loving God, willing to pay everything and, every, and any price necessary for our redemption. It's a place, I want to hear this good, and if you're taking notes, you may want to take this. Where forgiveness can be found by the unconditional love that was poured out by our Savior. Why the cross? The cross is a place that you seek for direction. It is still the place that teaches us success through perseverance. It is the place where God places your spiritual growth ahead of your comfort and your successes. The cross is a place where broken lives can be restored with the transforming power that only comes from our Savior. We serve a God 
who like to put things back together. No wonder they call him the potter. He puts it back together. There is no depth of sin. Or you can't go that deep in sin where God will reach down to his mercy and his grace and pick you back up. Who among us doesn't need to be picked up every once in a while? Let that man come forth. I'd like to talk to him. We all have our individual problems. But we serve a God that is much bigger than any problem that we face. So is the cross still worth it? The cross is still the place that helps us to understand that we cannot have victory in our lives until we're obedient to God. This act of obedience allows us to draw on the power that comes from him. Let me remind you, my brothers and sisters, that Moses relied on this power leading the children of Israel. Abraham exercises his faith in this power. Joshua, the great leader of the battlefield, depended upon this power. Elijah put his trust in this power. Gideon embraces this power and uses this power against great odds. Don't ever tell me that the power of God can solve your problem. There's nothing greater, not now or ever will be. We're failing because we're failed to reach out to the master. Your alternative source, he doesn't carry plan B. No second place for him. Bank on a winner every time, all the time. No second place for him. You want to win? Stop being on the losing side. It's not working for you. 25 years have passed and Einstein defined the definition of insanity of doing the same thing over and over and over and over again expecting a different results. Nothing is coming your way. I guarantee you 55, 65 years have gone by. Nothing is coming your way. Stop looking. The road has been closed a long time ago. Why the cross? Lives are restored at the foot of the cross. There's a French guy, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, so you're going to have to forgive my French here. I think he calls himself Voltaire. I'm Jamaican, so you're going to have to forget the accent. You know, I, I, don't, I don't hesitate to put that native patois in between this if I have to. And so this great infidel decided around the 17th century that he would wanted to destroy the Bible and the old Christianity thing and it's just uh, getting on his last nerves and get rid of it. And so he made a prediction. That within a hundred years, this phase, this brand of Christianity is going to pass. It's going to be out of here. It's done. But I can report this morning that after thousands of years, and probably hundreds of thousands of accusations against the scripture, Despite the gates of hell prevailing against it, the Bible still remains the number one selling book of all time. <laughs> Nothing like God's word. Heaven and earth would pass away before this book pass away. You know, Winston Churchill 
heard our pastor sp spoke about Winston Churchill last week. And since I'm Jamaican, and I'm not sure if any other Jamaican is in this house, you know, I'm going to, let me wear the ba badge of honor and remind you of my British upcoming that around 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock every day I need to have tea. But I have changed a little bit during my 30-something years in this country and then I'm now drinking coffee at this time of the day. But I want you to know that my education actually came from the British. And so during May of 1940, when Winston Churchill was called before the members of parliament, war could not be avoided at this point. At this point, Hitler had probably ran through about 20 countries in Europe, and he was sweeping across the nation, country after country after country. And Churchill was called in to address the people of Britain who was frightened at the speed at which Hitler was taking over Europe. And so I won't go into all his speech, but I'll take a little excerpt from it to share it with you. And, and let's pick this up somewhere around the bottom half when Churchill, they asked Churchill a number of questions. He, he wanted to reassure the British people that he's on a job. And he said, we have before us many months of struggle and suffering. And you ask, what is our policy? I will say, it is to wage war by sea, war by land, war by air, and with all our might and with all the strength that God can give us. That is our policy. He said, you ask, what is your goal? And I can answer in one word. It is victory. Victory at all costs. Victory in spite of terror. Victory, however long and however hard the road may be, because without victory, there is no survival. At the cross, victory was completed for the redemption of man's soul. Victory was completed because salvation is found in no other name. Victory at the cross was completed through the perseverance by our Savior. Nevertheless, he declared to God, not my will, but let thy will be done. Victory, in spite of how long and how hard the road was, Jesus said, Father, if it is possible, take this cup from me. However long and however hard the road is, because without victory, we cannot survive. Let me, let me remind you, my, my brothers and sisters, because of this victory at the cross, our future is certain. Our hope is restored. Our inheritance is protected by the King of kings and Lord of lords. No second place for our God. Victory at our cross, at the cross. A good friend of mine was going through some tough times. Now this guy was born here, right? So he's not Jamaican. He's much older than I am. And he was preaching a message at his church. And he was being honest and open before them. And so he explained to them that if you name it, he has done it. He wasn't afraid to tell them he was very abusive to drugs. And it devastated his life through the years. But at the end of his message, he reminded the audience of this. Listen carefully. 
You want victory? He said, stop dragging your past into your future. Let me, let me say that again. Somebody might need to tell us. Stop dragging your past into your future. Let go of the dead weight and the baggage. It is holding you back. This man had to give up a few things for his kids. When he saw how his kids were being treated by his ex, he came off that substance. And 19 years later, he's now preaching the gospel. Do not drag your past into your future. Get out of God's way. You want direction? He provided. I've read where success possesses the courage to walk each day towards something after coming through everything. And I know there's a witness inside you this morning who have been through just about everything. One of the old expressions in this country is there I've been there and I've done that. Start walking towards something. Your future is brighter with God than without God. Look at the alternative. We have more men in prison than a nation of 1.2 billion people in China. Think about that. A nation of only 300 million people plus. As more people in prison than a country with 1.2 billion people what would we have if we have 1.2 billion people 200 million stop dragging your past into your future it's time to start reconciling once again with your kids we have some men who have walked away from the family for years they haven't been to a graduation party. They haven't told these kids, hey, I love you. They haven't supported these children. Models are hurting. You guys don't ride the subway as I do. I ride the subway every day. Tell me I've seen it. The pain is real. The suffering is hard. And fathers are running and running and running but going nowhere they want to hold on to their youth but you look in the mirror and you start having a few gray hair hey when I came here I was only 21 and dropped dead gorgeous I'm telling you right now 160 pounds I'm 230 I'm slower my hair is falling out. I no longer have a fro. Let's not get sidetracked on that. Yeah, because I, I have a gift for the guy there, you know. So uh, let's get back on to the message. But in all seriousness, where are the fathers? How long are you going to continue to let down the people that you love? And how long are you going to hurt them? How long are you going to let your daughter see what kind of man you are? When you can't care, you can't provide, you can't protect. You'd rather go to prison than stand up and persevere through your hardship. Some of the greatest education you're going to get is through tough times. It builds character. Running doesn't help you. And then we have some of the mothers that got to learn to let go. Stop disgracing the father before the children. You're doing no good. You're damaging that kid for life. Believe me, I ride the subway more than probably anyone inside this audience. 
every day, twice a day. I've seen it, I've heard it. I'll take you on the tent trolley with me. It's time to start finding victory at the cross. Jesus paid it all. As we bring the message to a close, I'm going to remind you of something Brother George Peter Vaughn said. No time spent in the presence of God is wasted. My brother, you were correct now, you were correct in the past, and you will still be correct in the future. No time spent in the presence of God is wasted. You have a kid, and the kid is disobedient and strong. Keep praying for that kid. Show some tender mercies. Reach out beyond yourself and ask God to give you the grace and the dignity and the love to restore that relationship. You have some friends that you've walked away from, good friends. Ask God to give you the strength and the grace to restore these good people around you. After all, the bad ones are not working. They're your nightmares. The cross still remains that place that has all the answers to our prayer. Lord George, if you don't mind, we're going to make a call for salvation. My dear brother is going to come with a closing word of prayer and make the appeal that if God is speaking to you, you know your own heart, you know how deep you are in your sin. I can't save you, but I thank Jesus that the work was finished at the cross. No more substitute. No more excuses. Oh, God is still undefeated. He has come through every dispensation that you can name. And he still remains strong. He's a mighty fortress for us. He doesn't hide us in this fortress. He prepares us and strengthens us and equips us to get back in the fight. It's time to get back in the fight. Fight for your family. Fight for the things of God. Fight for your principle. Fight for the things that are right and honorable and pure and just. The cross still remains the answer to our problem.